Hi folks, this is Don Meisner with the North Country Fishing Report. We've had some wonderful fishing stories from the area. You know, I've I've given you my own story from the Oswegatchie River, but we've had some mild weather after the severe storms that we had a week ago. And it's allowed people to get out on the St. Lawrence without all the rough weather. You know, if, if you're a Bass Pro fisherman, you can handle the rough winds and so forth because it's part of your life every day. But for those of us that want to go out and enjoy fishing, it makes it nice when we don't have the rough weather to fish and, and to compete with. But the, the thing that I wanted to talk about today is <laughs> one of the things that, that, that stands out so much to me, and that is using braided line. You know, I know that uh, fishermen use all kinds of different stuff because I, I see it. I see it when I fish areas where a lot of fishermen go. I see a lot of line that's left in the water that they break off and that drifts down and you tangle in the line. But today I want to talk about why I love and why I hate braided line. First of all, the things that I love about braided line. Number one, you can feel everything. It's it's fantastic. You can just feel every tiny little tap on the line because it doesn't stretch. And it, it, it just, it, it feeds back every single input that happens down there. So you can feel the fish strike. And second, because it doesn't stretch, you can hook the fish much easier because uh, it, it, when you rear back with your arms, it sets the hook immediately. And here's the other thing. Because braided line is is really quite thin. In other words, you can get line braided line as light as ten pound testing. I got to tell you, ten pound test braided line is thinner than two pound monofilament I used when I was younger. So you can cast it a mile. It's strong. You can feel the bites. It's sensitive. So wow, it's a win win, right? No, it's not a win win. And here's the thing I hate about braided line. Number one, if you get snagged, you can't break it. Especially if you've got some of the a little bit heavier braided line. You get 20 pound braided line, and I'll tell you what. You put 20 pounds of wear and tear on your fingers. If you try to pull that line and break it, you'll cut your hands wickedly. So that becomes a huge problem. How do you, how do you get a... You, number one, probably not going to get the snag out unless you have a boat. So if you're standing on shore and you snag, goodbye. But how do you break the line? You can either cut it up by the rod, and then you've got line tangling, dangling out there in the water for someone else to hook onto. Or the only way, that, here's what I do. I have to find a stick, wrap the line around the stick, and then use the stick for my fist and pull the line until it breaks. And usually it's going to break right down where it's tied on, so you're not going to have that dangling out. The other thing about braided line, one of the things I say, it's so easy to use because it's thin and you can cast it a mile and so forth. Well, that easy-to-use thinness, and braided line tends to be very, very soft and pliable. And so anything can cause tangles that are unbelievable. I'll tell you what, you get a tangle with braided line and you better either cut it off or you better be willing to spend a lot of time trying to get all the little tangles out. So that's something I hate about it because it is, I, I have to be very careful when I pull the bale over to make sure that line isn't looped at all because if it is, goodbye. And finally, I found that, yeah, it's really thin and nice and it's strong and so forth. But if you tie a knot in it and you tie your lure directly to the braided line, I have lost so many lures fishing the Grass River in the summer because I'll hook a fish and they'll break it off immediately. And yet you take it between your hands and try to pull it and break it, you can't do it. So what happens is that that line, braided line, is easily abraded. It's called braided line because it's braided together, but it's not very abrasion resistant. It really abrades easily. In other words, it, it scrapes and cuts and so forth. And so I recommend if you're using it, you got to have something the last few inches 
where you tie your lure on, whether it's fluorocarbon line or something. And then the knot itself tends to be pretty good with braided line, but don't tie it directly to the lure because unless you want to retie constantly, it's going to become frayed and it's going to break off very easily. Until next time, folks, this is Don Meisner with the North Country Fishing Report.